In one of our last videos, I said this. All right, so let's go ahead and knock out the prep work. We need to strop the blade, we need to wet the leather, we need to tape the back, and we need to trace the design onto the leather. Y'all let me know in the, in the comment section below if it would be helpful if I did a video on those particular steps. So that's what we're gonna cover today. That and, you know, why my hands are black in the video. And, oh, by the way, we're also gonna announce the winner of the giveaway for the basic tooling kit. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reach. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the steps that you need to take prior to starting your tooling project. But before we jump into that, we got a couple of things we need to cover. First, a couple of weeks ago, Weaver did a giveaway where if you would give us your suggestions for upcoming videos, you'd get entered into a giveaway to win the basic tooling kit from Weaver. So today I get to announce the winner, and the winner is Angela Lewis. Angela, if you'll reach out to us through the Contact Us page on their website, they'll get that uh, sent out to you as quickly as possible, get that all squared away for you. Now, the second thing that we need to cover, why are my hands black in the video? I usually try to do my best to make sure that my hands are clean because I know it's not fun to look at somebody who's got dirty hands while they're doing a tooling project like this. But let's just say that there was a minor incident with the black dye. Um, and yeah, I tried for a couple of hours and couldn't get it all off. So sorry about that. In a totally, completely unrelated topic, did you know that Phoebing's dye is not water soluble and you can't use it for, um, you know, dyeing fabric? Yeah, it doesn't just turn the water gray or a black. It, um, it creates this nice little film on top of the water. And if you accidentally forget you're not wearing gloves and put your hands in that water, then that, that film on top is like tar and it sticks to your hands and won't let go. Yeah, um, don't ask how I know. Here's a pro tip for you though. If you take a magic eraser and rubbing alcohol and about an hour's worth of uh, elbow grease, yeah, it'll take black dye tar off of your wife's pristine garden tub. Yeah, don't ask how I know. Yeah, now let's go ahead and jump in. We'll talk about those prep steps that we need to do. Prep steps? I like that, I think. So we're gonna start with casing the leather. So what is casing? Casing is simply where we're adding moisture to the leather so that it will move the way we want it to and so that we can create that burnish that we all look for. And there's a couple of ways that we can do this. First, we can use a spray bottle or a sponge or something like that to simply wet the leather. Wetting the leather is different than casing the leather. So if you're in a hurry, you don't wanna wait for the leather to rest, you can just put water on top of the leather with a sponge or a spray bottle or something like that. Let it rest until it comes back to its normal color and then you're good to go. What I prefer to do is to case my leather. Now the way I do this is I simply take the leather and I submerge it in the water. I submerge it anywhere from a few seconds up until the point where the bubbles stop. Now something you need to keep in mind here, the longer you soak it, the longer it's gonna to need to rest. If you soak it for a few seconds, then you can probably start working on, on the project within an hour or two. If you soak it till the bubbles stop, it's gonna be more like a couple of days. So while the leather's resting, we can go ahead and start transferring the image to the tracing paper. One of the things that I like to do, it's not a requirement, but it's one of the things that I like to do, is I take a piece of mat board, I tape my image to that, and then I tape my tracing paper on top of that. What it's gonna do is allow us to spin the image and not worry about the paper and the tracing paper getting separated or anything. It gives us a nice platform to work on. So really quick, if you're finding the video helpful, if you're finding it useful, do us a favor, click that like button. It tells me, tells Weaver, tells YouTube that we're all on the right track. Now, as far as the project, the next step is gonna to be to create the tooling window. And the tooling window is not a requirement, it's not a necessity, but what it does is it defines the area that we're gonna be working in. It's kind of like a picture frame, right? One of the reasons we wanna do this is because generally you don't wanna take the tooling all the way to the edge of the leather. So the tooling window gives us those borders, those boundaries that we know we're gonna work within while still giving us a frame around our image. So the way that I'm gonna do this, Typically, I'm gonna use a quarter inch. So I'm gonna grab my wing dividers, I'm gonna set them to a quarter inch, and then I'm gonna scribe a line around the outside of my leather. Now, one thing I'll point out is note that I'm not starting at the edge and going edge to edge. I'm starting about a half inch to an inch inside the edge, creating my line. The first time around, they're not gonna connect. Then I can go back with my wing dividers and connect those lines. What this does is it prevents us from having those little scribe marks on the corners 
after we cut everything in. So it's really important if you want to avoid those scribe marks to start about a half inch to an inch, something like that inside the edge and then connect them on your second pass. Once the leather's rested long enough to start coming back to its normal color, we can go ahead and tape the back. Now, the reason we want to tape the back of it is because as we tool the project, we're moving the leather and that can cause it to uh, distort and stretch and that can really throw off your project. So to prevent this, what we do is we take regular old painter's tape, tape the back of the project. Once you've got it all taped, flip it over, take a blade, cut the tag ends off the, uh, the parts that are hanging out past the ends of the project and you're good to go. So once that's done, we can move to transferring the image from the tracing paper to the leather. One of the first things you're going to need to do is create a couple of loops of tape with the sticky side out, put that on the back of the leather, and then stick that to the mat board. Then we can take the image, position it where we want it within the tooling window, and tape the tracing paper down. And I want to point out that we're taping the tracing paper to the mat board, not to the leather. If you tape it to the leather, it will leave marks and sometimes you can't get them off. One of the tricks I've picked up is to put a piece of paper under my hand while I'm transferring that image from the tracing paper to the leather. And the reason I do this, that pencil that's on the tracing paper can rub off pretty easily. You can still see it, but it just creates headaches. By putting that piece of paper under my hand, it moves with my hand and it prevents the pencil from rubbing off. Once you got the image transferred to the leather, you're ready to start cutting it in. So that's gonna do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. And in the meantime, Go make something amazing.